Good morning, everybody. So today I'm gonna be working on this 2007 Chevy Silverado. And we're gonna be testing out the AC, see if everything's working great and properly. So right now I have this refrigerant analyzer to determine whether this car is 100% R134. Um, you, you could skip this test if you're working at home, only if you know that your car is 100% R134. Unlike this car, I'm not sure if it's 100% or if it could be either mixed with another type of refrigerant, which is R12. Yep, R12. And right now we're gonna verify that it's not mixed up because if it's mixed, well, we won't be able to work on it. We need to find the, because the inside has been, um, since they have been mixed, they're toxic and we do not want that. So what we're gonna do right now, we have positive on positive, negative on negative, which is the cable right here. Turn on the machine. This right here is the hose, which we will be connecting to the cold side, the low pressure side. But first, we need to cal calibrate it. So, disconnect hose, we never connect it in. Press calibrate to start. It may take a couple of minutes, but that's why we're here. <clears throat> in the meantime, we could verify what type of refrigerant this car needs to have. We would want to look for a plastic sticker like this. Sometimes most cars, smaller cars tend to have them on the struts or placed on the hood. Sometimes right here or on this side. But as you can see, this one says R134 a refrigerant one r134 so we know that this is gonna be a r134 hey so it's ready connect hose open valve and select refrigerant to test <clears throat> So, as you can see, there's two connectors, one on that side and one right here. Let's say you're not able to determine which one's high or which one's low. This, I know for a fact, is high. You wanna know how? This right here is a low connector. This should be only be connected to the low side. But look what happens if I try to fit in the high side. It's not going in at all. Even with pressure, it's not entering. So that's how I know this is the high side. Now like back here. There we go, connected with these. As you can see, you might want to give it a good tuck. There you go. Make sure it's on there. And choose the type of refrigerant, R134. Testing, just testing. Wait a couple of minutes and we'll see the results. A uh, quick tip, you guys might want to always use gloves when you're working on AC components. Reason being, the refrigerant is known to start giving you sometimes rashes or it tends to itch a lot. So as you can see here, we got pass 100% R134. So percent air. So, click more. Here we go. We got R134, 000. So this 
past. So now I could connect my AC gauges and start working on the car. But that's how you would want, this is a step you would want to do if you're working on a customer's car to make sure that it's the refrigerant inside isn't bad. But if you're working at home on your own car, you could skip this step. This step isn't necessary if you know what was in your car. All right, guys, since we have finished already testing it out, if it this is 100% R134, now we could connect the gauges. The gauges I'm gonna be using are from Harbor Freight. Pittsburgh AC Manifold Gauge Set R134. Open this bad boy up. Comes with the manual. The gauges, connectors, and the hoses. So let's set this thing up. First step would it would be you always want to connect high side to high side. This end you would always want to put it towards here. So let's connect that. Make sure it's nice and tight, pen tight. this yellow hose this yellow hose is used for for vacuum sometimes to just check out how the refrigerant looks as you can see there's a little um, glass so we can see the refrigerant connect it So since we won't be removing uh, any type of refrigerant or be doing a vacuum, we will want to connect this hose right here. Make sure it's hand tight because we don't want any refrigerant going out. It could cause irritation to the skin, so highly recommend using gloves. If not, please be as careful as possible. Also, recommend wearing glasses in case it jumps out on you. So now, the blue would always go to the low side. tight now on the other end you want to connect these couplers like this by this point i'm pretty sure you know blow blue with blue red with red there we go you can always connect them here at least in the meantime so you can carry them around High pressure. With high pressure. Same thing, you would want to make sure that they're hand tight. For some reason, I'm struggling. There we go. Connect them here in the meantime. That way you have easy access, you know, it's not on the floor. So that's where you would come here. 
this. So as you can see, there are two fittings. Let's say you have no idea which one's low or which one's high. I know for a fact this one's low, this one's high. But let's say if you didn't know, let's see, let's watch what will happen if I try to connect low on the high side. Even with all that pressure, it's not entering. Unlike here, still have this right? Yeah, before that, you always want to make sure that you want to open it. No, close it, I mean. Close it. What we're doing by closing it is making sure this thing is getting pushed back. So that way, once we connect it, no, no um, antifreeze will be, or refrigerant will be flying out. So, as you can see, go. Look at that. Look how easy that was to connect. So that's how you know which one is cold and which one's high. Now I'm gonna come with the high pressure and look how easy that was. Wait. Please don't forget to skip this step. I tend to forget, but I'm always very careful before. That's why I have gl um, gloves on and glasses. go give it a nice tug a nice tug now we want to want to make come back here and make sure this is closed good good make sure there's no air escaping go give it a nice tug wiggle it around make sure no air is escaping okay good we would want to come here and now we will want to finally open it. Now this side. Always want to move it back just a little bit so it doesn't get stuck. Same thing over here. Open it. And just move it back just slightly. So, as you can see, our gauges are giving me, on the low side, is giving me around 86, 87. Same thing on the high side. Giving me approximately around 86. Wait, no, it's giving me 80. So this is, you don't want to read this. This is the reading you will get when the AC compressor is not working or is not on. And as you can see, the car is not on at all. So I will want to come inside the car, grab the keys, turn it on, if possibly, possible, start the car, come here, set it to low, always set it to cold, recirculation, Always want to have it facing towards towards you. Let's turn this off. Towards the face. And defroster. And have it on full blast. Now we're getting some accurate reading. And this reading. As you can see, on the low side, we're getting 35. And on the high side, we're getting one. Let's see, that's like 181. So, this right here is good. The, no matter what car you're working on, the low, ch low side should always be in between 25 to 45. It should never exceed or be lower. Because if it is, there's a possibility that there's either no coolant, there's no, um, 
refrigerant inside the system or that there's there's something wrong the high the high side should always be in between 180 to 225 and that's also an act, that's also a good reading because everything's working if this thing is lower or higher something's wrong most of the time it's because the ac component the compressor isn't kicking on but as you can see we're getting some accurate reading Blowing nice cool there. Another thing we could do is give me a second, guys. All right, guys. So you would want to grab one of these. They sell my harder crates for like two bucks, and you would want to insert it on this one. Now we just want to give it a couple of moments in order to see how much, how cold this AC is blowing. As you can see it's dropping already, we're at 53. Most ACs should reach about 50 to 35 as well. Some could go even colder. As you can see now that i turned off the car the pressure went back to where it was in the beginning uh, like around 65 and this one like around 69 and like i said this is normal for when the ac isn't working if let's say you have the ac on full blast and there's no cold air but the gauges are giving you these type of temperatures is because there's a possibility that the ac compressor isn't kicking on the AC compressor on this car is located all the way at the bottom. So, we're depending on the gauges to tell us if it's working or not. But as you can see, from the inside and from the outside, everything is working. It was blowing nice cold air. So, that means we're good to go.